What's up, everyone, and welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Eric. Today, we're taking a look at the Seek Thermal, a thermal camera made for your phone. The company Seek makes many different thermal cameras. Some are independent devices, others are just dedicated cameras like this. This is the Seek Thermal. They make two models of it. They make the iOS one and they make an Android one. So I have the iOS model, so this is gonna go into any iPod Touch, iPhone, or iPad. This is just the basic one. They do make a pro version of it, which might be a little better than this, but we'll discuss that later. Diving into the Seek Thermal, it's really small, easily fits in the palm of my hand. It comes in a nice carrying case that'll keep it protected, which is really important since this is a $230 camera. It's not cheap. The unit is all made of plastic, but it feels really solid. There's a lightning connector so I can plug it into my iOS device. And then there's the lens, and the lens you can move around to adjust your focus. Using the Seek Thermal is really simple. Just simply plug it into your device, my own being my iPhone, and you have to download the Seek Thermal app. Once the app is installed, when you plug in the Seek Thermal to your phone, then it'll ask you to open up the application. Once you open up the application, you'll be able to utilize the camera. The app is relatively simple to use. It has a simple homepage, which will give you an introduction to how to use the Seek Thermal. There also is a gallery where you'll be able to see videos and pictures you've taken with the Seek Thermal. And of course, there's the live view mode, which will let you actually see the actual camera's thermal abilities. Even though the app is relatively simple, the app isn't perfect. It sometimes lags a little bit and freezes up, which hasn't been too big of an issue, but it does occasionally happen. It also likes to bombard you with wanting you to register for an account for the app, which you can click a button that says later, so you don't have to do it at the moment, but it does still pop up here and there, and it is a tad bit annoying. But once you get past the registration and you're in the live view mode, it's actually really nice. I can easily see the thermal readouts and whatnot of the room. And then on the left hand side, there's a nice bar that indicates the most hottest points and the coldest points in your image. And if you want to document the image in the live view mode, you can easily take a picture or a video. And in the picture or video, there still is the temperature readout on the left hand side. After capturing a video or picture, you can easily go into the gallery and save the video or picture to your camera roll or email it or text it to someone. But to give you a demonstration of this thermal camera, I'm simply in my basement and you can see that my camera is a lot warmer than everything around me. There's a heater in my background which is heating up the floor which the camera picks up on. I can see how hot my light bulbs are. Unfortunately, if you haven't noticed already, the video quality of the thermal camera is very poor. Obviously, you shouldn't be expecting a video like this with all this detail and whatnot, but still, the resolution on this camera is very low. Now, is that really that bad? I don't think so. It still gets the point across. I can still see what's hot and what's not in the thermal camera, so it's really not that big of a deal, but I always wish there was a little bit more detail in this camera. Now, some of you might be wondering, why do I even need a thermal camera? Well, as a tech reviewer, it does actually become useful at times. If I'm ever doing a product review on like a laptop, like my MacBook Pro right next to me, sometimes it is helpful to give a readout of how hot the MacBook is gonna get because you know heat in laptops can be relatively important to know if it's actually good with heat distribution. Another good reason is I'm working on a DIY LED video light project. Stay tuned, that's coming. But the LED diodes I'm using get very hot, and I wanna make sure that they don't get too hot, that they're gonna start hurting themselves and burning out over time. And I can use an infrared thermometer like this guy, but sometimes with metal surfaces, this doesn't always work that great. So using a thermal camera has completely changed how I can read out the thermal readings because this is not that accurate compared to the thermal camera. And in terms of accuracy, I have found that the thermal camera, the Seek Thermal, is relatively accurate. I haven't had an issue with accuracy. There was a few times I thought it was wrong, but it's actually not. It's been spot on every time. So the grand question, is the Seek Thermal for you? 
why not? If you need a thermal camera, this is a great device to have. Easily connects to your phone or tablet. And for only $250, it's a decent deal. I know $250 for a thermal camera, it's, it's a lot. But if you buy an independent thermal camera device, those can run about $600 or higher. So a $250 product that gets you the same results is pretty good. And they do make a pro model of this that probably will have a little bit more detail uh, in the image. But of course, I don't have that in-house, so I can't say that for sure. Anyway, guys, if you have questions, comments, concerns about the Seek Thermal, let me know in the comments section below. Anyway, I'm Eric, and I'll catch you in the next video.